What's up guys, JV2017 here, and today we're going to explore what is, in my opinion, one of the most intriguing new systems introduced in the new survival mode beta, and that's illnesses and diseases. Well, they're officially called illnesses, but they're pretty much like diseases. And at the very basic level, these are a set of negative effects that the player can be subject to if they are not careful within the new survival mode and the new rules of this mode. So if you're unfamiliar with the new survival mode beta, I've left a link in the description to my basic overview video that I uploaded a few days ago that gives a general description of what is new to the mode and what is different. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the six illnesses, what causes them, and how to cure them. Well, that was the original plan anyway. Actually, we're not going to look at that specifically because I've spent about 20 to 30 minutes with each illness trying to see what triggers them, trying everything I could possibly think of, looking online to see what other people are doing and how they're getting these illnesses. And after doing all of this, it seems that a lot of these are either so random that they can't be predicted or they're just not working properly. And this is a beta. And keep in mind that this stuff should be fixed and patched up and working properly before this mode rolls out with the update 1.5. But just a heads up, this video is a lot more exploratory and testing things out to see what works and what doesn't than explanatory. The only thing that seems to be working exactly how I would expect it to work are the antibiotics and the remedies. And so let's go ahead and start with those. Antibiotics and remedies can be crafted at a chemistry station, which is very nice. It's under the healing tab, and that's really the only new thing at the chemistry station. I believe you can also buy these things at stores. I haven't confirmed that, but it would make sense, especially for antibiotics. I would be okay with having to make these herbal remedies and not being able to buy them just because they are really specialty items and they require some pretty rare materials, some of them do at least. So first we're looking at herbal anodyne, improves your resistance to insomnia and weakness. As you can tell, it requires four different materials. That's the same for all of these different herbal remedies and all of them protect two of the illnesses because again, there is there are six total. So now we're looking at herbal antimicrobial, I believe that's how you say that, improves your resistance to infection and parasites. Those kind of go together, make sense. But note that ash blossom is one of the requirements. That's a very rare thing to find out in the world. You can only find it in the glowing sea or around that area. You can't buy it. You can't do anything like that. And so that kind of gives you an idea about some of these things are going to be hard to craft. Remember, you're in survival mode. You can't just pull up console commands. You can't, you know, just, you know, buy that from anywhere. You have to go out and actually seek out that item. And so some of these will be difficult to make. Next is Herbal Stimulant. This improves your resistance to fatigue and lethargy. I don't know if that's how you say that, but you need, again, a nice combination of things. You need some blossoms, a gourd and melon. All of these require two purified water and then some wild razor grain in order to create this herbal supplement. And finally, the most important new item, antibiotics. This is a cure-all for every single illness that you can get. All six of them, this cures every single one. All you need to do is take one of these items and your sicknesses will be cured. The requirements are maybe easier to find, but it is a higher cost. You will need some acid, more glowing fungus, purified water like normal, and then three stim packs. It's a little steep on the stem packs you will also need chemist which is all the way down at intelligence seven so if you don't want to run an intelligence based character obviously they're going to give you the option to just go ahead and buy antibiotics and that's how you will have to do it on to our illnesses now first i'm going to show you guys the ones that i could get to trigger although there's some weird stuff going on so first we're looking at infection and infection the description in the game is you take damage as the infection spreads and that'll cause periodic damage you'll see that reflected on your health bar and i'm not really sure if it can get worse progressively worse because there are some new systems that can get progressively worse but i could not tell you what's going on how i got this i was actually trying to test insomnia or lethargy and try to you know trigger those by sleeping or you know giving my player a lack of sleep you know just waiting instead of actually sleeping but i was doing this over and over and over i just was hungry thirsty had a little bit of fatigue and was tired my player was tired and it tells you when your player is tired but once i woke up from this sleeping bag experience right here just sleeping to save the game and kind of trigger something else i woke up with you feel ill and you have an infection and so i'm just going to hop in the pip away and show you guys you just click q or whatever console you're on to show that and there we are infection periodic damage and so i got the infection i don't know how it happened i didn't have any animals hit me i didn't eat any uncooked food or anything like that it just seemed really really random 
there are a few things that I would think would give you an infection in this survival mode, and it's eating, you know, uncooked meat from a horribly irradiated animal like a radstag. Maybe just simply being hit by it would pass an infection onto the sole survivor. Maybe waiting in some really irradiated water, or maybe just being in a really irradiated location for too long might give you an infection. None of that happened, and I tried. I let some mole rats hit me for like five straight minutes and nothing happened. So I would encourage you guys to test this out if you have the survival mode beta or let me know if you have got an infection from another source. Let us know in the comments below. I really want this to be an open dialogue so we can figure these things out. Also in an attempt to figure out either insomnia or lethargy, I accidentally discovered weakness. And the description for that is your body can't handle as much damage as normal. So you just saw that my character is severely dehydrated, starving, and also really lacking sleep. So I decided after putting my character through all of that tour to get a nice 24 hours rest and I woke up feeling well rested but also ill and it wasn't the illness I was looking for it was actually weakness and just taking a look at the effects here weakness is going to cause your character to take plus 20% more damage that makes sense and I think weakness in this context also makes sense but it took a surprising amount of starving dehydrating and not sleeping to trigger weakness I did it for probably five to seven in-game days straight no eating no sleeping no drinking also, as you could tell, the effect of antibiotics was very simple. I just took one, bam, my weakness was gone. Moving on, let's talk about fatigue. And this one is interesting. It's listed under the illnesses in the help section, you know, when you're looking at survival, but I don't think it's one of the illnesses that's gonna show up in your effects. And the reason why is because it's already been established as a new mechanic that doesn't really show up in effects, just like radiation doesn't show up. They work in very similar ways. Of course, you've got your hit points in the bottom left, your action points in the bottom right. When you take radiation damage, you see that in the form of the red on your health bar in the bottom left. In the bottom right, when you get fatigued by not drinking, not eating, not sleeping very well, you see that in the form of red on your AP bar. So I'm not so sure that fatigue even shows up in the show effects section of your pit boy on that screen where you'd find every other illness. Maybe it's just because I haven't been able to trigger it for whatever reason, it's a beta, it's not working properly, but it doesn't say that you're always fatigued when you've got red on your AP bar in the bottom right. That doesn't always happen. And so it makes me think either it's confusing and there's also a fatigue, just a general fatigue in the AP bar and also a fatigue illness you can get, or there's just one fatigue and that's on the AP bar. So I've kind of searched around online, haven't found a lot of information on this. So let me know what you guys think about that as well. Now let's talk about parasites. And the description for this illness is that it takes more food than normal to satiate your hunger. And what I did to test this is I ate a bunch of raw meat. That makes the most sense to me. You know, that's something like that would trigger parasites. And so I ate so many different types of meat. I had about seven different types of meat. None of them were cooked. I could not get parasites to actually trigger, but I have read online that certain people have gotten it to trigger by just being hit by enemies. And as you can see, I've already done that. I've been hit by multiple enemies. I haven't shown all the enemies, but I have been hit by enemies. I have stood there and let them hit me. Haven't gotten parasites from that. I've also read online that people have gotten it from eating humans with the cannibal perk. So that sounds like an interesting challenge. If you want to take cannibal, that sounded like a great idea for survival mode. It was a great idea in you know the vanilla survival mode that we had since the game came out. But in this new one, probably not the best idea because you'll have to carry around antibiotics if that is a consistent thing that gives you parasites. As far as I'm concerned, the jury's still out on this one. Either it doesn't work how it should, or it's really inconsistent, a very small chance. Not really sure. Now let's talk about lethargy, which is one of those I just couldn't figure out. I couldn't trigger it, and I couldn't find anyone else on the internet so far that's you know actually gotten lethargy and talked about it or shared it. So what did I do? I starved. I kept my soul survivor awake. I didn't let them drink anything for five, seven days straight, like I said before. I would think that would trigger lethargy. I also would think maybe that drugs would have something to do with lethargy because, you know, something like Jet gives you, or it doesn't give you AP in this game, it slows down time. But generally speaking, I think drugs would maybe make you lethargic because you're taking these drugs, they're affecting your system in a certain way. And I tried that, took a lot of Jet, took a lot of buff out, nothing happened there. And finally, we have insomnia. And for this one, it made sense to me to drink something that caffeinates the player. Obviously, Nuka-Cola is going to caffeinate the sole survivor if you drink it. I drank a lot of Nuka-Cola. I drank, you know, two just right here. But in several other tests, I drank five in a row, ten in a row, and then tried to sleep. And I would think, you know, insomnia is something that keeps you awake. It's kind of frustrating. That's an illness. And so if I drank something that caffeinated me, tried to sleep, and then was unsuccessful, bam, I'd have insomnia. But that, that did not happen. I did plenty of other no-sleeping 
tons of sleeping tests. None of that seemed to trigger insomnia. I will say though, oddly enough, when I first started playing survival mode in my first video for survival, I got insomnia for no reason after sleeping for 24 hours straight. You could argue that sleeping too much in turn actually gives you insomnia because you're not able to get as much sleep since you slept so much in the first place. But in practice and trying, I've slept a ton. I've slept 24 hours straight several times while doing all of these tests and I wasn't able to replicate that. So that just seems like an anomaly to me. And I think we just don't know, you know, what triggers insomnia. So those are the six illnesses. And I understand if this was a little bit of a frustrating video to watch, it was kind of frustrating to record to find out that a lot of these things I just couldn't trigger. I couldn't figure out how they were working and this is a really intriguing new system for me I was really looking forward to it but again we are in beta so if anything if this video didn't really teach you a lot at least it starts a dialogue and lets Bethesda know hey a lot of these illnesses are not working they need to be patched up we don't want them rushing the survival mode out and having it on consoles and half of this stuff doesn't work you know you're getting insomnia for no reason like I did I know I've said it several other times but let me know in the comments section below if you guys have some experience with this survival mode beta have you found that some of these are more predictable or are they completely random like my experience let me know your experiences with that and also any other theories you have for these illnesses share them in the comments section below all right guys today we explored a lot of the new illnesses to try to figure out how they work in the new survival mode beta for fallout 4 and next time we will cover more fallout on my channel so stay tuned for fallout 4 tips and tricks videos if you learned something new remember to hit that like button i would really appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe for more survival mode coverage automatron dlc and general tips and tricks videos Talk to you guys next time. Peace.